representatives, thank you for the opportunity to be here today to speak to you all. Uh, I'm a county judge from Maverick County. <coughs> Eagle Pass is the county seat. I'm going to reiterate a little bit what the mayor said. So we're having the same issues that we've been dealing with. Some of what uh, County Judge Owen has been talking about in Valverde, which is a community which is 60 miles north of Maverick County. Uh, I will add some other information. I, I will mention that uh, uh, we see the unfortunate situation that the judge of North sees, uh, maybe for the fact that uh, when the uh, situation first occurred in February, word immediately gets out what community you're supposed to go through uh, when you're seeing an influx, and thanks to uh, the help of uh, Mr. McCraw and, and the Department of DPS, uh, we had a great deal of support in Maverick County. So word got out pretty quick that probably Maverick County wasn't the place to go through. Uh, Eagle Pass wasn't the place to necessarily go through. We had a great operation down there. But at the same time, now that things have begun to settle, we're beginning to see some of the problems uh, that the mayor, Mr. McCraw, and, and uh, County Judge uh, Owen have talked about, um, that we are spread thin. Uh, I can tell you that the United States Border Patrol is spread thin in our community. Uh, more than 50% of, anywhere from 50% to a little bit over 50% of the manpower that they have are being utilized on humanitarian efforts, uh, situations that they can no longer handle. Uh, when you live in a border community like Maverick, you actually um, rely on USBP uh, to help support programs with the Sheriff's Department, uh, people who are crossing, and that has been spread then also. Uh, there's a program at the state level that is called, um, I believe it's Stone Garden, and we're getting pretty close here to where Stone Garden funds are being expended uh, to the point of probably non-existence here real quick before the fiscal year is over. Uh, that is a program that is available that allows uh, sheriff's departments to also support not only DPS, but any uh, federal agencies that are down there that are doing any kind of border protection work. Um, as far as the uh, humanitarian efforts are concerned, we do have uh, several NGOs in our community, as the mayor mentioned. Uh, they're doing an excellent job. Uh, the stance, unfortunately, that we have to take is the same as the one in Valverde, where um, really as an entity you can become too financially involved because there are liability issues that are involved. Uh, unfortunately, if something may happen in a situation like that, a county can actually be held liable for something that happens. So we're using the NGOs for that, that particular reason that we're not allowed to be um, investing or supporting as far as an entity's concern. But those are some of the concerns that we have. Um, I know that we're dealing with Homeland Security here, and I have uh, brought together some information that some of the programs that do uh, work very well. I believe there's one that comes out of the um, department with the Rangers called Program Drawbridge, although it may be a little bit pricey. Uh, we would request that, 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 you know, that continue to work in a community like Maverick or any border community because it does allow USBP to have access. It does allow local law enforcement to have access to a situation where you do have people crossing. Um, in reference to the question that was posed earlier, I, I believe I can help with some of that information that if they do cross over through the river, they are processed in the same manner. Uh, they do go through the screening process. And if those individuals, they do the USBP and, and customs also uh, uh, screen those individuals to make sure that they're allowed uh, to come into the United States, if there's some that are flagged, if they do see some situations, uh, it's, of course it's a lot difficult for them to, to get across or to even seek asylum. Uh, but at the same time, we, we do find ourselves in situations, unfortunately. I know you do hear it, but we do have intel that, that does state that some of these individuals are kidnapped and they are forced to come across, and some are used as a diversion tactic. Sometimes there are even families that are used as such so they can actually get some of... Uh, the bad stuff across, you know, uh, the border. And as Mr. McCraw mentioned and everybody else mentioned, uh, that stuff doesn't stay just in the community. And even if it did stay on the border, well, we don't, of course, obviously, it shouldn't matter. Uh, we're part of Texas, we're part of the United States, and we shouldn't want it there. Um, at the same time, I can tell you that uh, we are having situations uh, where uh, we've had our own companies that are going up to try to help and support uh, to get some of these individuals out. Um, as far as transportation companies, they're practically based in Valverde, not in Maverick County right now, to make sure that we're able to use 
and help them in their efforts to try to get um, some of the immigrants out to where they have. And as mentioned before, their destination is not the border. They have already got places to go. They know where they're going to go. Um, they've, they've, we just make sure that we get them processed the way they need you to, to as fast as we possibly can. Thank you.